Okay, so this video is part two of what to do after you have an accepted offer. It's a question that I hear from first time home buyers all the time. They found a house that they love, they've made an offer on that house that's been accepted by the owner. The question is, what's next? In the first video, I walked you through the process of going from having an accepted offer to having a legally binding contract of sale. That's a really important step. In this video, I'm gonna go through all the steps and all the important things you need to know to go from having an executed contract of sale to the closing table where you actually become the owner of your new home. As I said before, it's really critical for you to have an experienced agent helping you through this process and advocating for your interests. But if you made it all the way to being in contract without having an agent, I'm going to assume that you're gonna do the rest of the process yourself. In that case, what are you watching this video for? You don't need it. But you could be working with an agent already and you're just not comfortable for whatever reason asking them all the details of the process. And that's fine. I'm happy to go over all of it here no matter what your situation is. Now keep in mind, I'm a real estate agent in New York City, so my experience and my information are coming from this market, but the generals are gonna be the same across the country. So before I get into it, please do me a huge favor and take a minute to subscribe to this channel. I'm putting out new content all the time and it'll really help me to reach new people if you subscribe and press that notification bell. If you have a question or a comment, you can post it below and don't forget to like the video. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, so in the last video, we went through the process of getting you in contract. You have signed, wired your earnest money, and you're now legally obligated to proceed with the sale, as is the seller, as long as all the conditions of the contract are met. Next are three very important steps that will need to be satisfied before you can close the sale. You will need professional assistance on each step. Unless you're paying cash, you will need a mortgage to buy the home. The loan will come from a bank, so you'll either need to work directly with a bank loan officer or work with a mortgage broker that can connect you to various loans from different institutions. Banks compete with one another for business, so everyone will try to get you the best terms that they can. Make sure to keep an eye on the different closing costs in addition to the interest rate offered. Closing costs can really add up, and sometimes going with a bank that has a slightly higher interest rate but lower closing costs is going to be a better deal in the end. And get ready, because you're going to learn a lot of new terms in this process. PMI, buying points, LTV, arms. It's a lot and it's way too much to go into here. I'll make another video about that in the future. It is important though to work with a bank that's really familiar with the market that you're purchasing in and is very familiar with your type of transaction. What type of bank you work with will depend a lot on your circumstances. If you're a well-qualified buyer that's looking to get a conventional 30-year mortgage, you'll have a lot of options. If, however, you have flaws in your credit history, you're a foreign buyer, you're buying as an investment, or you need to sell an existing home to finance your next purchase, you need to work with a bank that's well-versed in that type of transaction. Again, your agent should be able to provide you a list of institutions that can take care of your specific needs. An appraisal of the current value of the property will be commissioned by your lender. This will be done by a licensed appraiser who you will typically have no contact with. These appraisers are impartial experts who can independently verify the value of the property. This is a very important step because it will determine how big of a loan you can get from your bank. Most typical mortgages are 80% LTV, which means your bank is willing to loan you up to 80% of the home's appraised value. If the appraisal comes in lower than the agreed upon purchase price, you're gonna have three options. Number one, you can make up the difference yourself in cash. The bank's gonna loan you up to 80% of the appraised value. That difference between the appraised value and the purchase price, you can make up yourself in cash. Number two is you can go back to the seller and try to get them to lower their purchase price. You're back to negotiating, and again, you need a good agent for this. It really depends on how anxious the seller is to sell how many other buyers there are currently in the market, and how close to actual value that purchase price really is. Number three is you can walk away from the deal, assuming that you have the appropriate contingencies written into your contract. 
The appraisal is always a big hurdle in the buying process, and trust me, the buyers and sellers both are always on pins and needles until that appraisal comes in. Okay, number three is homeowner's insurance. You will be required to purchase homeowner's insurance for your new property. Your bank is offering you a loan using that home as the collateral. They'll wanna make sure that that asset is insured. Even if you're buying the home in cash, you're still gonna need homeowner's insurance. Okay, so once the house appraises for the purchase price, it's fairly smooth sailing and time to schedule a closing. There will have been a target closing date written in your contract, but it's really just that, a target. After the appraisal, your bank will issue a loan commitment letter, and then it's time for the two lawyer's offices to get together to set a closing date that works for all the parties involved. The seller will have to make arrangements to clear out and vacate the home so that you can take possession. Your agent should have been keeping in touch with the seller's agent through this time to make sure those plans are being made. Just be prepared to get a confirmed closing date with very short notice. It happens a lot. Agents do not control when a closing is and we're often the last to know. Again, it's the lawyers that set the closing. Okay, so your closing date has arrived. You're packed up at your current home and the moving trucks are scheduled. You will have received a closing statement from your attorney. This is an approximate itemized accounting of all the monies due at closing. This will include your down payment, your legal fees, a mansion tax if your purchase is over a million dollars, and other taxes and associated fees. The fees are quite different between condos and co-ops, so it's important to be prepared for them. That's a subject for another video. Okay, there's one more step first, the walkthrough. This will be arranged by your agent within 48 hours and up to the day of your closing. The walkthrough allows you to physically walk through the empty property to inspect its current condition. You will want to recheck the condition of the home and make sure the movers didn't cause any significant damage in the move out. If you see anything amiss in the walkthrough, you should alert your lawyer so it can be resolved at closing with a closing credit. Okay, now it's time to close. All of your efforts are about to come to fruition. Typically, this will be the first time you've met the seller in person as the two of you sit across the closing table to sign the documents required for you to take possession of your new home. There will be a final accounting of all the transactions that have taken place throughout the sale, including any closing credits. You will be asked to sign more documents than you ever could have imagined, but your lawyer will be there to explain all of them to you. If you're buying a condo, you'll receive a new deed in your name, and if you're buying a co-op, you'll receive the stock certificates. Congratulations, now you're a homeowner. You've joined the ranks of millions of Americans who live in their most valuable asset. Here's the keys.